We begin on health care. Canada's premiers will meet on Monday after getting a chance to digest the federal government's funding proposal. Some provinces are signaling that they'll accept it. They're disappointed with the dollar amount, but the need is pressing. Now, though, the feds have to negotiate side agreements with each province and territory, and that is where the real work will happen. Jean-Yves Duclos is the federal minister of health. Minister, thanks for coming in. Hi, David, and hello, everyone. It, it seems like we're a far cry from when you met with the health ministers in Vancouver and a press release got issued in the middle of the meeting saying talks are going nowhere to, to where we are now, where some of the premiers are reluctant to accept this money, but it seems like they're going to accept this money. What, what were you able to say to them in the meetings to get everybody to this point? Well, indeed, we've gone some good way uh, since we met in November, and the important change that took place was about focusing on what matters to Canadians. You know, percentage points, tax points, very few people listening to us care very much about that. They want to know what those dollars, which are the same dollars, and they came from, come to the same pockets, the same people, what would those dollars change in their lives, you know, in terms of access to family health teams, reducing backlogs in surgeries and diagnostics, helping retain workers and you know, look after the workers, and increasing mental health care services, in particular for younger Canadians. Right. Canadians don't care about tax points and percentages, but the premiers do, because they were talking about it for quite some time. So what, what did you say to them to get them to move to this point, or was it just the fact that the public got tired of the squabbling over money and it just caused a shift at the first minister's table? Well, first, 200 billion total dollars, plus including the 50 billion or so new dollars announced last week, these are significant uh, uh, dollars. The second, provinces and territories know that it's not only about dollars. If it were just dollars, the problem would be solved already because most provinces and territories already have budget surpluses. And most of them are heading towards even larger budget surpluses. And some have been announcing uh, reducing in reductions in taxes. So it's not only about dollars. Yes, dollars uh, matter. But what matters more is how we translate those dollars into real uh, outcomes. And uh, that's what we've been uh, talking about on Tuesday with the Prime Minister. Okay, so you met with Premier Ford yesterday. You traveled to Toronto to have a conversation with him. He sounded more positive yesterday uh, than he did on, on, you know, after the first minister's meeting where he called this a, a down payment and a starting point. How confident are you, Ontario, the biggest player, that you're going to get a bilateral health deal with them by the federal budget, which Minister LeBlanc says is your target? I th I'm very positive for every uh, province and territory. I was there with the Prime Minister uh, on Tuesday. It was a very reasonable, balanced, collaborative meeting. Again, because we serve the same people for the same purposes, living in similar circumstances and challenges, and again, with the same dollars from the same pockets from the same people. So I'm very positive, given what I've heard on Tuesday. But also because I've been working with my colleagues, health ministers, over the last year, we had more than a dozen meetings. We all quickly arrived to the same shared priorities. You know, health teams, family health teams, backlogs, workers, retention of workers, and a modern uh, health data system that saves lives. Um, David, too, many, too often in my province, certainly it's true outside of my province, I need to bring a piece of paper to my pharmacist and the pharmacist needs to fax to my practitioner if the pharmacist can't read the handwriting. I go to an emergency department, I need to redo exactly the same test I may have done just a few weeks earlier, lots of time and, and efforts and resources wasted, a lot of stress on workers also. So that, that's what you mean when you said the other day, data save lives. It improves efficiency in the back end with better electronic sharing of information and patient records so you can get to your needed uh, procedure or medicine more quickly. Is that what you meant by that statement? That's right. I heard a story from paramedics uh, um, in an ambulance trying to look after someone who is an unconscious and not being able to know what allergies that person may have, what drugs is already taking. So it's, it's sometimes critical. It, may, it can make a difference between saving a life and not saving a life. But it also is obviously related to how we can improve on technology, on drugs, what works best when you treat people. No, lots of of uh, quality of care can be substantially increased when great information is better shared across different providers, across different settings. Right. So a positive meeting with Premier Ford, and you have expressed confidence that you can get agreements with the provinces uh, before the budget, but you know, you're a Quebec politician. You've seen the reaction in Quebec, some of the headlines describing this as a failure by Premier Legault, that he suffered a defeat in his inability to get the, the full amount that he was looking for. I mean, could that derail progress with Quebec if it's being cast as a defeat so sharply for the Premier? 
Well, we live in a federation, and you and I, if we were premiers, we would do the same thing. We'd be asking for more and more and more dollars from the federal government. That's how it works, and I understand, and uh, I appreciate that. Uh, again, in Quebec, and I have a great relationship with my colleague, the health minister in Quebec, in Quebec we know that our system is not up to par with other places in Canada and other countries in the world. So we know we can and should be doing better. And the dollars we announced last week would be meaningless. They would have no sense if they didn't translate into results, including for Quebecers. But, you know, politics comes into this, e even though it is a health care conversation. And if the headlines and the commentary is screaming that Premier Legault was defeated, that he lost here, I mean, that creates a political dynamic. I mean, do you w wonder or are you concerned that he might try to dig in a bit and try to assert some extra leverage if this is the sort of criticism he's receiving domestically? Yeah, well, I obviously am not the, the great, the best commentator on, on the provincial politics and including the provincial politics in my home province. What I know is that in my, when I talk to people in my community, what they care about is not percentage points and tax points. Is what they ask is how are you going to work together with the, the provincial health ministers uh, to improve the quality of care I get if I get sick, you know, to avoid the fact that if my child, fall, my child falls sick, I'd be terrified because I might not even go to the emergency department mm -hmm. because I don't know whether it's going to be uh, you know, adequately uh, able to treat my child. So uh, lots of stress, uh, including obviously in conditions where people need care and they can't have access to a family doctor or other uh, family health team that can help uh, care for them. You've been the loudest champion, I would say, for metrics and measurements in the system throughout this conversation to show the importance of how different health systems are responding, where their strengths and their weaknesses are. What's the accountability metric for the money you've just announced? Like, how do we measure whether this $196.1 billion over 10 years actually bought reform, whether it led to an increase in nurses and doctors? How will you display your accountability on that? What will be the metrics you'll, look, you'll point to? Well, great question and three pieces to that. The first is uh, are the shared priorities, family health teams and all these things we mentioned earlier. The second thing is there will be action plans by each province and territory. They will obviously do the, write those action plans in the way they want. It is a flexible uh, framework. They, they do what they think is best. But then third, there will be, and, or, and these indicators already exist, there will be key common headline indicators, one of them being, for instance, how many people, how many more people will be able to access a family health doctor or a family health team. And so that's going to be public. There will be targets, timelines for provinces and territories to tell Canadians overall, including the federal government, how fast and how well they are going to achieve those targets. So how quickly will we see results then? Because it's going to take time. There's no pool of unemployed nurses and doctors out there in critical mass that can just be plucked off the streets tomorrow to solve the, the staffing problems. How quickly are we going to see the results? Are we talking two years, three years, five years? What's your sense? Oh, a, it's going to take time. No. And, and one reason is that the pressures on health workers are enormous, including the aging pressure. You know, our health workers are also aging. The population is aging with more complex cases, more chronic diseases, more infectious diseases. So let's be mindful that it's going to take time. The second thing, however, is that it's not only uh, hiring new workers, it's also retaining existing mm -hmm. workers, recruiting more of them, but also recognizing the credentials of those that were trained internationally. And then, obviously, the work environment. All the healthcare workers, as I know, are tremendously goodwill. Now, they are there to make a difference in the lives of patients, but sometimes their work environment is not supportive to their ability to provide the best care they can. So how do we make people work better together? You know, nurse, nurse, nurses, nurse practitioners, dietitians, psychologists, family doctors, general uh, well, uh, specialists, physicians, how do we, including pharmacists, how do we make those people better able together? Right. That comes in part through the data, the technology, the sharing of data so that uh, they can work better together and provide, therefore, better, care, better and safer care to people. Okay, so you're going to travel around the country to meet with provinces to talk about their plans. You're confident you can have the bilateral agreements all done by the budget or mostly done by the budget. The premiers are going to meet on Monday. What do you expect that they will say when they finish their check-in call when the Council of the Federation gets on the phone on Monday? We'll see, but I'm very optimistic uh, based on the, the conversations I've had already with my health ministers uh, in particular. Uh, but then 
on the, the, the timeline. Now, there are two parallel timelines. The first is the legislative timeline. Obviously, we are in a minority government, so the budget has to pass in the House. Right. That will take a little time. But parallel to that, there is also the, the writing up of those action plans, which will take some time. Now, because we want that to get that right now. These action plans... So those be won't be done by the budget, you don't think, the action plans? I'd, I'd be surprised because okay. that requires a lot of careful work, the targets, the timelines, the actual action that, that the provinces will want to do. And uh, there will be three, these will be three-year uh, action plans. So you know, it will be over the next three years. So lots of thoughtfulness will uh, need to be um, inputted into the, 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 the design and the publication of these action plans. Okay. Minister Duclos, thanks for coming in. Thank you very much, David.